Medical News Network, I'm Heidi Sleet, reporting from the American Association for the Advancement of Science annual meeting in Washington, D.C. How can traumatic brain injury be considered a chronic disease? So it's chronic from two viewpoints. First of all, the, the deficits that you accumulate as a consequence of traumatic brain injury stay with you by and large for the rest of your life. There may be some improvement, but we know that it produces a substantial amount of chronic disability, which is both physical, neurocognitive, and neuropsychiatric. The more interesting question that's just started emerging is whether it's an ongoing process so that the acute traumatic injury triggers off something that causes continuing neuronal injury. And there are several candidate processes for this, including the acceleration of neurodegenerative disease, the development of brain inflammation, and these things can cause ongoing injury that not only prevent the brain from recovering as well as it would, but halt recovery and prevent the eventual acquisition of a level of activity that would otherwise have been possible. Now, neither the fact of ongoing injury nor the association of these processes with that ongoing injury is a done deal and there needs to be quite a lot of research. But clearly, if the, the process is initiated after traumatic brain injury go on for weeks, months and years, that widens the therapeutic window and allows us to achieve better outcomes than we might have been able to do otherwise. What factors affect clinical outcomes in TBI and how does that make research a challenge? So th the problem is that TBI is essentially looking at a single insult but it initiates a whole host of diseases which vary depending on the host. So whether the person is young or old, whether they have comorbidities, whether they have other injuries elsewhere in the body and importantly what their host genotype is because the host response varies with genotype. It also varies depending on the treatment. We know that for similar types of traumatic brain injury, there may be up to three-fold variation in outcome between different centers when they participate in clinical trials. And clearly, not all of the things that we do for these patients with traumatic brain injury are going to be doing them good. And we've, we've got a strong suspicion that in some patients, some of the treatments may not be doing them good, but may be doing them harm if used inappropriately. And finally, it's very difficult to assess outcome because the outcomes from TBI that we're currently using in clinical trials are very crude outcomes and we need to find ways of assessing those outcomes in a much more refined manner. What makes TBI unique in terms of its impact on quality of life? I think a useful contrast is with stroke, which is the other common acute neurological disease. And very often stroke presents with a motor deficit in a limb or one side of the body, which is quite disabling. But what's specific about TBI is while patients don't present with motor deficits, they often present with significant cognitive deficits and neuropsychiatric deficits. So depression occurs in 30% of TBI su survivors, impulsivity, problems with concentration, problems with multitasking, essentially problems with living are very common in patients with TBI. And this has an impact not just on the patient but also on the family because TBI robs a person of what's most important to them, what makes them the person they were before they had the injury. For Global Medical News Network, I'm Heidi Splee.